Yo, 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 what is going on? It is the Master Drum Whiskey Room, Whiskey Wednesday night. Why did I just say yo, yo, yo? I don't know. Why am I rhyming now? <laughs> What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Master Drum Whiskey Room, Whiskey Wednesday night. Uh, here, live, right now. Uh, Going to be a hell of a night, guys. We have a lot of Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. Uh, we have, I, I said last week, this is what we're going to do. Uh, I got a ton of requests to kind of go through this one. Uh, pick each one of your favorites from each year, put them in a blind flight, see what happens, see if C918 still holds up, see if C923 is the new favorite. Uh, again, this is just modern batches. We're not going back to the old pirate dusty bottles because I just don't think that would be fair. Uh, on top of that, we're going to try some K Luke uh, batches uh, four versus the brand new one, which is six. I have not had one pour of six yet. I actually did pour it but it's sitting right over there, letting it air out a little bit. So we'll do a live review of uh, K. Luke Batch 6, which I'm really excited to try that one. I've heard nothing but great things so far. Um, uh, let's see what else. Yeah, we have um, – well, we'll be talking about a little bit about the fundraiser we're going to be doing next week. I'll be talking some about some updates for Blend Again when that is going to be kicking off. And, uh, yeah, we're just going to have some fun. My Falcons are 2 and O. Oh, holy shit. That's right. Uh, so they, they, uh, they were rocking their, their old uniforms, uh, their throwbacks. Uh, I still prefer this logo over the new one, to be honest. Uh, but I'm glad to see them wearing them and, you know, getting a win next week, uh, last week. They have a tough test with the Lions this week, but we'll see what happens. You know, it's always, it's always nice when you can root for your team. So, uh, let's say hi to some folks in the chat. Let's go for it. Uh, before we do that, let me throw a ticker on so you guys can kind of see what's going on tonight. Uh, let's go first and foremost, Kenneth Rathbone, he's Rathburn. He says, I throw C922 in there probably because it's the only one I presently have. That's it out of all the ones. That's all you have, Kenneth. You must drink them all, right? Wandering Magoo is here. System trend. He says, just throw them in there. Yeah. Everyone's waiting for me to fall again. I get it. I get it. I had a lot of water today. I had, you know, I had my Z biotics. I'm ready to go. (laughs) Uh, fifth quarter tailgate says, just got my K Luke. He says he's going to pop it tonight. That's awesome, Scott. That's cool, man. KCD cheers all. Just picked up C923. Let's go. Very cool. R2 Bourbon 2. I have the C921 and B522 out of slime. I can't wait to even see the C923 here in Staten Island, New York. Salute. Yeah, I'm actually going back to New York tomorrow. I'm really excited. I haven't been back in like three years, um, almost three years. Uh, it's close. Actually, next month would be three years was the last time I was in New York. Uh, we'll go through that. It was a few different reasons for that, but I'm looking forward to getting back and seeing all my friends and coming back with a much thicker New York accent than I do now, because that's what happens when you visit New York. <laughs> uh, Ham Turkey says ECBP tried and true. Uh, Dave Boba song is here. Roscoe P. Coltrane. Uh, um, Big 11 is in the house. Uh, Dwayne Knight I see here. Let's see. Joey B in the house. What's going on? Um, James Lay is here. Uh, let's see who else What's going on. James, uh, Bo's wine guy in the house, Mark S William Wiley Four leaf whiskey is here. What's going on, Stacy? Again, I always say it, but if you guys have not checked out Stacy's channel Four leaf whiskey, you want to really get into the nitty gritty of some really great Irish whiskeys. Go check out her channel. Tim looking gorgeous is here. What's up, Tim? Gorgeous. Tim gorgeous. Sorry. I always mess up your name. <laughs> Sandeep Chima is here. How you doing? Are you slammered? Is in the house. Uh, Brandon Lincoln, uh, Smoke and Firewater is here. Jeff Perkins, Honest Charlie, Whiskey Juice. What's going on? Yeah, we're ready to rock tonight. Outside the Star is here. Uh, he is picking up a bottle of ECBP uh, Friday. Dude, yeah. What? 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 What, what was that? My first one shattered on my driveway two weeks ago after having one dram. Oh, dude. Sorry. Hope you. Hope you enjoyed that one dram, though. <laughs> Malt Reviews is here. What's going on, fellas? Happy Whiskey Wednesday. Pirate Bottle Time. Yeah. Yeah. Pirate Bottle Time. It's time, says James Lay. James McKee is here. Shauna Marie D. in the house. What's going on, Shauna? Joe the Sample Guy is here. Shredward. Travis Robeson. JG. What's going on, buddy? Uh, let's see. Nathan Jurgensen is here. Legion Yama finished. I really enjoyed that one. I don't know what you think about it, Nate, but... Uh, I think the fit, I think the nose was a little bit more interesting than the palette for me, but I still thought it was a really solid release. Uh, JP in the house. What's going on? Mike Widener's here. Dustin Pullman. 
and a bunch of more people coming in. I see Wade Ward. I see – I got to catch up. I'm way behind here. Uh, let's see. Tim Doherty here. Whiskey Nose, Bald Guy Bourbon, Adam Wagner, Keith Stepanski. Cheers all. Go Eagles. Congrats on a 2-0 star for your Fal Falcons. Adam Shelton is here. What's up, Adam? Nice to see you, man. Will Barrett says, your ECB showdowns are always epic. If C923 wins the night, you're sure the Pirate Bottle won't have to make an appearance? It might. If the C923 ends up winning the whole thing tonight, I have a Pirate Bottle right behind my shoulder back there, and I'll see if it compares. We'll we'll figure it out. Um, Nathan Jernigan says, agree about the nose. Legion Yama was good, but too fruity for me. Yeah, it is pretty fruity. Um, here's, a good, uh, here's a good question. Baker's 13 versus Russell's 13. I would still go Russell's. However, the Baker's 13 this year, the single barrel I had was was very good if you just saw my review. Um, I will be dropping my review uh, either tomorrow or Friday for the new Russell's Reserve single rickhouse. Um, it was finally my time to sit in front of the camera with it uh, now that it was uh, officially announced and do a proper review of it without any other you know bourbons that you know I was tasting either before or after. And I think it was even more impressive I think I was even more impressed with it now than I was last week, but uh, we'll get into it. Um, let's see. Just scored a Weller 107, says Jeremy Shaw. It's a banger. Ron Miles is here. What's going on, Ron? Nice to see you, buddy. Ron Miles says also C923 is legit. Yes, it is, buddy. Uh, the average drink is, is, is here. The drink. What, did I just say the average drinker? Uh, I'm already ready for New York here. The average drinker is here. <laughs> What's going on, uh, Dara? Nice to see you as always. Everyone subscribe to Dara. Again, great content. Uh, Keith Stepanski's in the house. Uh, Kenneth uh, Rathburn is here. Cue up the falling stool video. All right, you guys just want to get it over with? Here we go. Ah, uh, I fell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it never gets old, does it? Yeah, just falling on my ass. Oh my god, that was uh, that was a day. Um, all right, now we're gonna move on from that. <laughs> we're gonna get into a little bit of K Luke here. I'm gonna I want to dive right into K Luke Batch Six. I want to sip a little bit with you with K Luke Four. Kind of get my bearings here. I haven't had really anything to drink tonight, so I need to get my palate prepped. I did have a sip of a. Everyone always asks me, do you you know prep your palate before you do tastings. I do. So normally I sip a 100 proof bourbon. So normally it's either Wild Turkey 101 or I'll have something bottle and bond. Uh, I'll have, you know, E.H. Taylor small batch or it's just something along those lines to kind of get my palate going. So uh, tonight it was just some Wild Turkey 101. Uh, found, found North Batch 7 review coming. So Austin, uh, they sent me bottles, but they sent them to the wrong address, and then when I went to go find them, they were gone. So I'm going to have to see if I can acquire some more bottles from them. Uh, but the minute I do, I'll do a review for sure. Hey, I'm falling over here. <laughs> we already have 297 in the chat. Guys, hit the like button while you're here. Uh, a couple of things I just want to mention. Uh, when it comes to, uh, let's see, so Blendy Geddon, you know, the 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 <laughs> All of a sudden this week, we're getting a lot of submissions. I'm getting uh, a lot of uh, deliveries, people getting their blends in. I was a little bit concerned. It didn't seem like a lot of people were up to getting their blends in this year, but they're starting to roll in now. It's becoming quite the bracket. So um, now with me doing the fundraiser next week, which we'll talk about a little bit here in a second, um, and then being away this weekend, I'm probably going to push the start of blend again until uh, the second week in October. So if you guys still have blends that you're looking to, uh, to to enter, you're still working on them, you still have some time, you can email me at themastandrum at gmail.com just in case you, uh, you need. All right. So get those blends in if you're still working on them. And this year it's going to be pretty epic. I cannot wait to see how this bracket goes. All right. On top of that, before I forget... Um, next week, right here, Wednesday night, a night for Navia. All right. Live fundraiser happening, 927, 9 p.m. Now, this is going to be a double, uh, a back-to-back -back night. It's going to start over on Hello Whiskey Again, uh, Hello Again Whiskey Friends at 8. Uh, and then it's going to transition over here to 9 o'clock. It's your chance to win bottles donated from the whiskey community to help Navia defeat leukemia. All the proceeds will benefit Darrell Stewart's daughter, Navia and the treatment and the chemotherapy, the chemotherapy 
that this adorable little five-year-old is having to deal with right now. So this is going to be a night. I, I can tell you right now, we don't have a final count on bottles, but we're looking at over 50 so far. Not sure that final count, but I think we're going to get closer to 100 bottles maybe uh, by the time it's all said and done with the reaction and the support of the whiskey community. It's going to be epic. Um, we, we haven't really formulated how all these names will be chosen for the giveaway, but the link uh, to her GoFundMe is in the description of this video. Uh, I will pin it in the chat here for you guys uh, just to kind of get that going. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll mention it again uh, before before I forget, before the end of the night, because I think it's uh, it's going to be super important for everybody to be involved in this. And um, no, nobody's child and no five-year-old should be dealing with, which, you know, I know there's a lot of kids out there uh, that have, uh, you know, that, that go through this and unfortunately the cost of it, but Darrell Stewart has been so paramount in supporting the whiskey community that, you know, and you know, if you guys don't know, he's the one that works with me mainly when we do the St. Jude fundraiser at the end of the year after when blend again is over. So he's the main donator of bottles and he's always supported other kids that need help. And now, now it's kind of flipped on us. Now we have to help him and his own child uh, defeat leukemia. So get ready next week, 9 p.m. is going to be a bunch of special guests. We're going to have games. We're going to have a lot of bottles to give away. It's going to be a night to remember. So that's next week right here, starting 8 o'clock. Hello again, Whiskey Friends, and transitioning here from 9 until whenever, until we hit our goals. So we'll go from there. Uh, let me uh, throw that in the chat here real quick um, so I could put the uh, – uh, did I? Oh, there we go. I got to do that. And then let me pin this thing for you guys. And let me pin that message. I meant to do this earlier, but totally forgot. So there we go. Message is pinned. If you guys want to, you know, contribute to the GoFundMe now, I think we're about 4,000 something, maybe 5,000. It's climbing. So we're getting there, guys. So thank you for all the support. All right. Got some 1920 in the blend. All right. I'm going to start here with K Luke Batch 4. We're going to go through some, uh, just a few um, news stories here before we get into all the whiskeys, because once I start with all of these, you know, things will get interesting tonight. So let me let me start off with the news while I have uh, my wits about me here. Um, here we go. Let's, uh, let's start with, uh, as I mentioned, the announcement finally of Russell's Reserve Single Rick House. Now, you guys got to see me taste this uh, for the first time last week. Um, and this was the, you know, the, the press release that just released, uh, just today. So today Russell Reserve announced the release of single Rick house Camp Nelson F the second bourbon in the brand single Rick house collection. This debuted last year with the Camp Nelson C according to the brand when wild Turkey master distiller, Eddie Russell tasted the stocks from Camp Nelson F. He immediately knew they had something special and said, this is one of the best whiskeys we've ever made. Um, so this is bottled at 117.6 proof. Uh, Camp Nelson Rickhouse F is available for a limited time at suggested retail price of $300 per 750 milliliter bottle. Uh, some of the other details that you guys might not know about the Camp Nelson Rickhouse F is one, it's non-H dated, but reportedly has bourbon in it uh, between 10 and 15 years old. Um, it's obviously non-chill filtered. I know 300 bucks is pretty steep. But Master's Keep was 275 this year. And I keep saying all the time that, that Campari now knows what they have with Wild Turkey. They are reading the tea leaves. They know the bourbon market. They know that people are willing to pay these high prices for something special from Wild Turkey. And um, as, as tough as it is with that type of price point, this is the world we live in. <laughs> um, See, James Taylor, a lot of people are going to say this. I'll take a few of the 13s over this, and I get it. And the 13 um, is very, very good. But that thing is just different. The the Russell's uh, Rickhouse F, it's just kind of a different animal. It doesn't have that oak presence that Russell's 13 does, but the flavors in Rickhouse F are unbelievable. Um, but, yeah, Russell's 13 is a cheaper option. Totally get that. So if you don't want to pay 300 I totally get it. Um, let's see here. I found an old label bottle of 1910 last week. Does anyone know if those were non chill filtered? It has a little sediment at the bottom, but I can't find anything online about it. Um, I think Jason, I think, uh, old Forrester does chill filter their whiskeys. If I'm, if I'm not mistaken, I'm not sure about the 1910 though. That's a good, that's a good question. Um, 
Yeah, I we I talked about that one, Devin. Um, I have not had that one yet, but I have heard about it. It was uh, I had it in one of my news series, uh, I think a couple weeks ago, that the next um, the next old R cigar cut was going to be that blend of all these uh, port rum sherry and sauterne finish. So I was not a big fan of the cigar cut at all, the last one. So I really don't have high hopes for it, but you know, you never know. We'll see how it is. Uh, all right, next up, just when you think you can't get enough of Basil Hayden, Basil Hayden comes right back. That's right. The next Basil Hayden is here, guys. And to my surprise, it's a malted rye. That's right. Basil Hayden malted rye will be hitting the whiskey sphere <laughs> pretty soon. Um, so this is supposed to be a unexpected soft side of rye, according to Jim Beam. But on Tuesday, uh, Basil Hayden Whiskey announced that they're adding this whiskey to the brand's core lineup. So this isn't just going to be a regular release or a special release, I should say. This is going to be part of the lineup from here on out. Um, this is the more a more approachable rye, distilled from a 100% malted rye mash bill. This latest expression will be available for purchase at a suggested retail price of $60 for a 750 milliliter bottle. 80 proof, as always um 60 bucks and um yeah you know if you guys read the press release the nose taste and finish notes are so simple nose elegant and floral taste soft vanilla lightly toasted rye and finish says warm spices that's it that's the whole experience for 60 bucks that's the entire experience just saying Anxiously awaiting Basil Hayden. Uh, <laughs> is there any Basil Hayden toasted Amburana 13? You know, that could happen. I mean, I if it seems like all the weird, like experimental stuff that Jim Beam is willing to do always comes out through a Basil Hayden label. It's just, it's crazy. Uh, put a little background, background music on there. Um, let's see here. Yeah, 80 proof, but everything in Basil Hayden. Remember, Basil Hayden is a beginner's approach to whiskey. It's not made for us. It's not made for the whiskey geek or the bourbon geek. It's an approachable whiskey that people don't want any burn. They just want to enjoy the whiskey without any sort of, you know, it's a shame because people will try that, that malted rye. But I mean, New Riffs malted rye is so delicious. Um, some of the stuff that uh, Sagamore's working on is incredible. I mean, yeah, it is what it is though. Um, all right, let's go to the next one here, and we're talking, uh, let's see here, Blackened. So the next Blackened release uh, is going to be in a collab with Rabbit Hole Whiskey, you know, out of Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, this one, it looks like it's going to take some of the, um, I'm trying to remember what the blend is here. So this is, uh, let's see, Masters of Whiskey Series, a blended bourbon crafted alongside Rabbit Hole distillery and its founder Cave Zamanian. So this is a blend of straight bourbon whiskey distilled in Tennessee and Kentucky's finished in Calvados casks and bottled at cast strength proof of 106.59 proof. If anybody doesn't know, Calvados is a French apple brandy. Sometimes some of these Calvados casks can be really heavy with apple, really heavy with apple peel. It really depends on how long the, uh, the, the finish was. But the base of it is a 13-year-old straight Tennessee bourbon. Um, and then the Rabbit Hole High Gold High Ride Double Malt Kentucky Straight Bourbon uh, as well. So that's the blend. Um, let's see. Price on this one. Did they, retail price of $150 bucks for this bottle. So there you go. $150. Bucks. Um, next up is 2XO. This is the next release from Mr. Dixon Deadman. Uh, not only is he releasing this one, but he has released uh, a, a standard, um, a standard release that's supposed to be a little bit more approachable and a little bit more, um, kind of a more of an everyday expression. So, two new bourbons here: American Oak, which becomes the fir brand's first ongoing release in its new Oak series, which the brand describes as a series of everyday offerings where Dixon will match the profile of each batch for consistent taste and character. Uh, 2XL will implement a double oak technique in which Dixon introduces additional charred oak to its barrels, a fitting practice with the brand whose name stands for two times oak. Um, this is going to be a suggested retail price of only 50 bucks. Now, the second release is going to be called the Tribute Blend, 
which is the third small batch release, priced at $100. It's an homage to Deadman's parents, a limited release. It's made of Kentucky straight bourbon whiskeys, one distilled from a mash bill containing 35% rye and the other containing between 16 to 18% rye. So uh, those are the next Dixon Deadman releases. You know, I mean, those could be, you know, for the most part, the last one I really liked was the Innkeeper. I'm hearing good things about the Tribute Blend. Not sure what you guys are trying or, or hearing. <coughs> I already saw a couple people that got to try some that had some good things to say. So I'm hoping to get my hands on that bottle uh, at some point soon. So let's go to the next uh, one here. And this is about Jack Daniels. So Jack Daniels made a little bit of noise because uh, they were announcing that they were doing their... Um, their single malt, their American single malt that releases a special release is now going to be a malt whiskey travel exclusive uh, with a branded pop-up. So Liquor Giant Brown Form is partnered with Lot Duty Free and Singapore's Changjai Airport Group to, br to bring the travel retail exclusive Jack Daniels American single malt to the airport via a pop-up location in Terminal 1. It will run until October 12th and expected to reach 3 million passengers. Um, so this is their Oloroso Sherry uh, single malt, 100% um, American barley, traditional charcoal mellowing process, and then aged in American oak barrels and finished in Oloroso Sherry casks. Um, this is going to be, let's see here. So give me a price. Um, I don't think there's a price listed here. I guess being uh, in a you know, in a duty free. I'm not sure what the price is going to be on that, but if you're traveling and you want to try the lower proof one, it's available for you. If you want it, uh, let's see big news out of Buffalo trace. Buffalo trace has partnered with the iconic Chris friggin Stapleton. Uh, this is just one of those partnerships again, where I think just Buffalo trace, they just pick and choose just really perfect partnerships i think chris stapleton is probably the biggest name in country music right now um he's going to be joining forces with kentucky mega distillery buffalo trace for an upcoming whiskey brand so what is what's it going to be uh known for his song tennessee whiskey he finally has his own whiskey slated to hit the shelves next year so uh let's see the spirit is bottled at 90 proof and crafted by buffalo trace master distiller harlan wheatley this is blend number 40 and it's a blend of premium whiskey that speaks for itself, according to Buffalo Trace. Um, they haven't announced what's in the whiskey yet, uh, but it apparently has notes of oak, maple, currant, and leather. It's going to be named the Traveler, which is a fitting name from whiskey from Stapleton. You know, judge uh, seeing that his uh, his album was named uh, the Traveler back in 2015. Uh, so yeah, so Chris Stapleton. Buffalo Trace, who knows how limited it's going to be. You know, you know, anything from Buffalo Trace, you know, I, I have to play it. Never gonna get it, never gonna get it, never gonna get it, never gonna get it. Yeah, we're not going to see that whiskey. Nobody's going to see it. Unless it's like a, unless it's like a big worldwide release, which who knows if it's going to be. We're never going to see it. All right. Yep. That's about it with uh, Buffalo Trace. <laughs> and lastly, um, before we get into just two new labels here, guys, lastly, we have uh, big news out of Sagamore. I don't know if any of you guys heard this, but Sagamore Spirit has been not all the way bought out, but pretty close to being all the way bought out. Uh, so let me dive into this uh, story here. Uh, Italian conglomerate. That's right, Italian conglomerate Ilva Serrano, uh, Serrano enters American whiskey category with acquisition of Baltimore rye producer Sagamore Spirit. So they have purchased a majority stake of the Baltimore, Maryland-based rye whiskey distillery Sagamore Spirit, and they just announced it just this past Thursday. Actually, last Thursday. Sagamore Spirit is a well-regarded rye whiskey brand, having won awards, uh, as you guys know. Um Ilva Serrano holds, uh, Holding owns Royal Oak Distillery, which produces Irish whiskey brand, The Busker. The acquisition of Sagamore, however, marks the company's first move into the American whiskey space. Um, Ilva Serrano revealed that it's decided to relocate its North American headquarters to Maryland. 
So um, it's best known for Di Sirono. So if you guys have ever had Di Sirono, which is a sweet Italian liqueur, and it's pretty popular around the world. Um, they also own a bunch of Italian brands. They own some vodka brands. Um, and yeah, there's, there's a lot of things to unpack here. Not sure what the structure is going to be like. Um, but Kevin Plank said, uh, owner of Sagamore, Growing Sagamore Spirit has been an incredibly rewarding experience with a team that has obsessed every detail across this holistically Maryland grain-to-glass whiskey business, Kevin Plank said. Um, I want to thank Ilva Serrano Holding for their team's passion, understanding the specialness, specialness, is that a word, of our unique product and look forward to the outstanding horsepower they can add to our next chapter. So, I mean, that's big news. Um, Sagamore has been kind of in the uh predicted to maybe be one of the next ones bought up and here you go another italian company coming in damn italians <laughs> coming in buying in the american whiskey but but i do see a di sirono finished uh sagamore spirit rye in the works that that's gonna happen come on you know that's gonna happen um hey bt speaking of sagamore what's going on man there you there he is uh, did you hear that Buffalo Trace is opening a distillery in London next year? So it's not a distillery, Joey, from what I understand. It's a um, it's going to be a storefront. It's their first brick and mortar store overseas in Europe. I think it's going to be in London. I'm not sure if they're going to have any distilling capabilities there from what I read. But yes, Buffalo Trace is opening uh, its first brick and mortar uh, storefront in London. So there you go. Yep. Amaretto finished stag eight coming soon. Totally. Uh, we have a couple of uh, Super Chats. Can't be a Royal Rumble without a pirate bottle, says Rob D. Uh, can't be... Oh, dude, you did it twice. Thank you so much, man. You're crazy. Uh, let's see. David Reichens, what do you think of Pinot de Charente finish? Never tried it before thinking about grabbing a Westland pick with that finish. Uh, they could be really good. Um, Westland... I can't say I've had the Westland one, dude. Wish I could help you out, man. Um, this transaction doesn't make sense to me. SAG didn't seem to be into that kind of growth. You know, knowing Kevin Plank, I'm, I'm sure he wanted to reach Sagamore more globally. Um, you know, Sagamore has been the leading, you know, the leading, uh, you know, kind of the leader in bringing Maryland rye whiskey back to the forefront. Um, so who knows what, what types of plans they have, where it's going to go. My only hope as as always with acquisitions like this, just if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Just leave Sagamore alone and what they're doing. Let every amazing person that works there keep doing what they're doing. Don't screw with the whiskey. Listen, you want to add an amaretto liqueur finish Sagamore? Fine. But just leave them to what they're doing because what they're doing is incredible. They have so much good stuff that's on the market and their stuff just getting better and better. So just leave them alone. Uh, let's see here. 472 in the chat. That is right. Maybe BT will open a distillery, uh, in England and come out with a single malt. <laughs> maybe, maybe average drinker. Amen to that. Absolutely. All right. Just two labels I want to bring up here. One is a, is a, is a serious label I want to talk about, which is a Knob Creek 10 year rye. It looks like that they're going to be bringing out a 10 year H dated rye whiskey here soon. Um, excited for that. You know, Knob Creek ryes are always pretty good. Uh, the proof on this will be 100 proof. So again, Jim Beam just hitting us with a lot of high age statements. And it's not a, you know, a news segment without a Good Times label. I have not seen this one yet. Good Times. Mango. That's right. Mango. Barrel strength, single barrel straight rye whiskey finished in mango brandy barrels. I'm telling you, if there's a brandy out there, Good Times is going to find it and they're going to finish some shit in it. And that concludes that. All right, let's get into the K. Luke Batch Four, which I absolutely love. Actually, I meant to pull up um, uh, any of the information on K. Luke Batch Six that Jonathan might have posted. Um, let's see here. Yeah, it looks like it's already sold out on Sealbox, which is uh, pretty incredible. Um, let's see, Batch Six. Um, so 119.8 proof. Let's see. This is their largest batch to date, which is the batch six, which we, we are going to try. But let me, uh, kind of pull that up. Um, I don't see anything with ages. I'll have to ask Jonathan about that one. 
But let me know what you guys have in your glass. Let's start. Let's start tonight. Here we go. Batch four. Absolutely love it. It's so balanced and good. Batch four has a real good shot of, of making my top 10 this year. Um, it's fruit forward. It's balanced. It's got like that really beautiful top, you know, to it. Spicy finish. Absolutely love it. 1920. Why is C922 in the rubble? Uh, why is C922 in the rubble? Um, well, so this is what I did. So I'll talk about this a little bit. So I went back and watched every one of my Elijah Craig barrel proof, you know, triple matchups at the end of every year that I do. I got, you know, this one coming up uh, soon uh, this year. And I basically selected every single batch that ended up being my favorite that year. So personally, for me, these are my favorite batches. C922 was absolutely amazing, delicious, but I still went with B522 for this matchup because it won that blind more often than not. So uh, I'm going to stick with that one. But all the ones that are here, um, I can't even remember them all, but they, they're kind of going down there on the screen. All the ones that, that you see on the bottom of the screen, once it scrolls by, are all the ones that end up being my personal favorites for the last six years. So we'll see how we'll see what happens tonight. Dino's drinking some K Loop toasted. Rivka has some Maker's 46 French oak. Several Willet purple top samples. Master and Drum going to London for the October 1st game, says Bourbon Engineer. I wish I could. <laughs> I wish I could. Uh, yeah, honestly, I was thinking about putting C922 in there, but honestly, the, um, uh, I don't know. I went with the, I went with just like what I picked for my video. I think C922 actually did up, did end up doing better for me at the end of the year, but I wasn't going to throw a seventh in here. This is already way too much Elijah Craig Barrel Proof for one night, so... I think I'm good with six. We'll see what happens. All right. So this is K. Luca batch number six. So let me um, throw this up here. You guys could take a look at it. There it is. K. Luke batch number six. There you go. 119.8 proof. You see the batch number six right there in the bottom of the bottle. Uh, mash bill, high rye and low rye. So generally, he uses some uh, high rye mash bill and low rye mash bills to blend together to create that. So you know what? Let me uh, put this right here. Um, sipping some Disco 8. Cheers. That's awesome. Someone pad the floor for Jason when he falls. I appreciate that. Scott, you want to come over and help me out with that? <laughs> All right. Let's check it out, guys. Here we go. Batch 6. First impressions here. Wow, that is sweet. Oh, okay. So, so first things, first big difference here that I that I notice. Batch four is a lot more fruit forward already on the nose. Like for this one, this one is just like pure like raspberry, strawberry, extremely confectionery. Six, six takes you to a little bit of a darker place, a little bit spicy. A little bit more toffee butterscotch, which I love. Oh, man, there's a there's a nuttiness to this, which I don't remember getting in in any other uh, K Luke's. Yeah, chocolate. This is completely different than four, at least off the nose. Wow. Yeah, just a different profile here. Uh, four to me, yeah, like I said, super sweet, super confectionery, powdered sugars, a lot of fruit forward uh, notes here. Yeah, I get like raspberry, strawberry. And then this one goes into like this toffee, peanut, chocolatey, spicy. And a little bit, definitely more oak presence on this one versus four. Interesting. All right. Cheers. Here we go. Let's try K. Luke back six. Oh, 
<laughs> wow. This one is funky in a good way. So all the fruit forwardness I was getting on four, I am now getting on six. I wasn't picking it up on the nose, but on the palate, it's very fruit forward. I, I, I mean, maybe it's because I'm coming off a of four, but I feel like I'm getting a little more of the, um, you know, raspberry, strawberry type notes to it. But it's got a, a, a funky type of aftertaste to it that I am digging. Like an oak funk, like like a dusty note almost a little bit. Man, yep. That nuttiness comes through on the back end of this one. Um, let's see. Sounds like six over four, says Kenda23. How does five match up to four and six? Jason W., I'll, I'll have to do a, a full-on, just a fatal three-way of all three of them and see which one ends up being my favorite. Um, batch five, I know I didn't like more than four, but six is quickly rising up there versus four. Six has a longer finish and a longer finish than four does. That finish is crazy on six. Um, yeah, yeah, whiskey nose. Yeah, batch five wasn't didn't do it for me like batch four. It was still a really good batch, but batch four to me is the bee's knees. This is gonna sound weird. But this reminds me a little bit of like a really, really good Booker's batch where it's got the nuttiness to it and it's got that heft, but with a lot more like fruit forwardness on it. Um, there are only a couple of batches of Booker's I think that do that. Um, but that's off first pour at least. That's what it's reminding me of. Like a very, very fruit forward Booker's. A really, really good high end Booker's batch. Yeah, the nuttiness is there. The chocolate is there. Spice. The more you sip it, I think it gets a little bit more easy to sip. But yeah, it's that nuttiness factor that it has. It's almost like a peanut buttery like type of thing that it has. And then on top of that, it's like overlaid with some like dark fruit. Man, that's good. Damn, I mean, he's Jonathan Mezano's crazy, man. Um, K Luke MNGP in Kentucky. K Luke is MGP in Kentucky blend. Yes, correct. Sign me up for anything with butterscotch. Yeah, Adam, it's not so much butterscotch anymore. Now it's more peanut buttery. ADHD says fatal three way sounds like uh, the result of my wife learning about my recurring dreams. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh, Maddie. That's right. Go out with a bang. K. Luke tasting like Booker's. Yeah, like to me, there's a there's a distinct nuttiness to it for sure. But more fruit forward. Maybe not Booker's. Maybe maybe Booker's isn't a, a good example. Maybe it's more like a Knob Creek, like single barrel. It, but it's got a nuttiness to it. You can even like lean on maybe like a heaven hill type profile to it there's a nutty profile to it like pecan slash peanut butter slash you know with some fruit on top of it all right let's go back to four now now i don't know which one i like more they're they're two they're two completely different animals to me four i think is the one for the masses where it's Definitely a lot sweeter. Like it's way more confectionery, way more fruit forward. Uh, batch six though, batch six has that finish, man. The finish is ridiculous on six. But it's not as sweet as four. It's sweet, but it's a different sweet. Man, two more bangers. Uh, or another banger, I should say, from K. Luke, man. Jonathan Mezano, if you're watching, dude, killed it again. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to stick with it. I'm going to say it's like a Booker's. It's like a really really good Booker's with more complexity to it, more fruit on it. It's good. Um off the record, do you know what the distiller rhymes with? 
off the off the record, do you know what the distiller rhymes with? Uh, I don't know. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I think I'm I think I'm missing you there. Yeah, Indiana, Kentucky. Um, what state? Yeah. So K. Luke sources from uh, Indiana and Kentucky. That's where that low rye high rye comes in. So, uh, oh, where do they source K. Luke? Yeah, Kentucky and Indiana. MJ's here. What's going on, Scott? Uh, the Whiskey Saint. Darrell is here. The man, the myth, the legend. Again, guys, um, we are going to be going to be uh, helping support Darrell and his family next week, right here, live, starting at eight o'clock at the uh, Whiskey uh, Hello Again Whiskey Friends. Then transitioning right here. Um, let's see here. Kentucky is NDP. Kentucky is a non-distilling producer. So Scott, okay. Yeah, it's it's got a very peanut buttery profile to me. And I'm curious, uh, Scott, if you open this up tonight, if you feel the same, let me know. Anybody that got the K Luke six and they want to, um, you know, talk about it a little bit. Man, it's also got what the hell is that like funky flavor it's got? It's got something different. Like it's like this weird like sour fruit note to it, and I can't kind of target what it is. What is that? It's gonna sound weird, but it, it tastes like a like a melon, like green melon or something like that. Um, Jonathan sources from magical fairies that tinkle little drops of bourbon goodness is Bayou Drams. Yeah, I mean it's uh, yeah. What is that? I don't know if it's melon, if it's a. Uh, there is something weird in there that's very different. It's not coconut. I don't know if it's cantaloupe, but it's something. It's it's a weird fruit flavor I'm getting, but it's not it's not off putting. I'm making it sound like it's bad. It's just adding another layer to it. Oh, non disclosed producer. I see what you're saying. Yeah, it's fruity. The more I go into it, it's more. It's getting more fruit forward. I'm gonna pour a little more. Let it open up a little bit. There we go. I'll do a little bit more. I mean, I, I really like when these blends get past the shoulder. It can really kind of, it really starts opening up. I mean, it could, it could completely change, but I'm going to let this one open up a little bit here. I'm going to keep drinking four. Uh, while that opens up a little bit more. No, not artificial melon. It's just like a hint of it. I, I don't know how to describe it, to be honest. It's, uh, it's this weird fruit. Huh, whatever. I'll, let me go back to it. Yeah, the nose is like oaky and peanut buttery to me. And then the palate has some of that, but then it's but then it's like fruit forward. But it's not like your typical like cherry, raspberry, strawberry. It's it's, it's just something else. There's another sweetness to it. Um yeah. It's good. It's got a little bit of a funk on it. It's 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 good. I, uh, again, I can't wait to do kind of like the fatal three-way here and see what happens. Um, let's see here. Another pour of K. Luke on a six-bottle NCP night. Hope you brought a pillow downstairs with you. It says, buy you drams. Um, MJ, the GoFundMe is pinned above. If you like to donate, we have a crazy giveaway happening next week. Yeah, the giveaway is crazy. Again, guys, I'm going to uh, put up the uh, thumbnail again right here uh, next week. Wednesday night uh, starts at 8 o'clock at um, Hello Again Whiskey Friends. Uh, a night for Navia, live fundraiser, your chance to win bottles donated from the whiskey community to help Navia defeat leukemia. All proceeds will benefit Darrell Stewart's daughter, Navia, and his family. Um, just an incredible night of giving. Um, and like I said, Darrell has been really, uh, he's been really, uh, what's the word? Uh, just been really giving with his own time, you know, and putting it through just a, raise money at the end of each and every year for blend again. And, uh, now we're going to, you know, pay it forward, give it right back to him because he needs it as Navy has to go through chemotherapy. And we all know that that gets really expensive and that money starts to run out. 
We may have another couple of announcements next week on how you can donate. So it's going to be a hell of a night. So make sure you tune in next week. All right. Bass and Drum, please add a Dan Calloway signed bottle of the Goose Island collab to Navius fundraiser. Dude, dude, Ron. You know what, Ron? I will send you the email uh, and you could actually donate that bottle. Make sure it gets into the uh, gets into the uh, to the spreadsheet. Jeffrey Wack has a formal laid out, so I will send that to you, Ron. Uh, Ron, just give me, do me a favor, buddy. Text me now. This way, when I'm done with the live stream, I can see your text and I'll send you the link. All right. Uh, sorry to spam Jason, but want to ask again. Using a 20% coupon to pick up one last bottle before sober October, Sagamore Cast strength at 48 or Bartstown Rye at 54? It's a good question. Um, man, you know what? I would, the Sagamore cast strength, I love it. And there's a lot available of it, but I would go with that Bartstown Rye. If you have a chance to scoop up that Bartstown Rye, I think it's really good. So, uh, I would probably grab that one. Jason, are there any bottles? Oh, wait, Hemingway, Hemingway Rye. Uh, yes, I've gotten samples of that and it's actually a really delicious rye. Eddie D, Jason, are there any uh, bottles that you don't think open up and get better after the shoulder? It seems that's a golden rule. Um, man, that's actually a good question. Uh, oh, man, what doesn't open up? So to me, blends. Blends are kind of the golden rule that need a little bit of time to open up, and so are finishes. Finished bourbons, I think, need time to open up so you can really truly get what that maturation is gonna you know taste like um after a little air time um normally high proofers need some time to open up i feel like when you get into low proofers or stuff that's um you know maybe like 100 proof and below i think as as that stuff oxidizes and gets past the shoulder sometimes it just loses it's a little bit of a punch that it has um so i'm i'll probably stick with that answer i think that's for me, at least, that's what usually happens. Um, yeah, I like I like the Sagamore, but I feel like Sagamore you can you can get Bartstown Rye. If Bartstown Rye was like readily available everywhere, um, I don't know where you where you live, but I see Sagamore Cast Strength Rye all the time, and it's freaking delicious. But I love the finish they put on the Bartstown Rye; I think it's really good. So um some of the, the younger willets get sweeter past the shoulder and that's not always great says will barrett there you go will it pot still that's a long way to the shoulder <laughs> for will it pot still bbc rye sits here yeah i mean how do you know the bourbon hunters podcast guys says colton bledsoe they they're right here they live right here in columbus with me they're in columbus ohio they're local um the Barstown Rye, I think that's just a product of the rye whiskey. I think people just tend to go towards the bourbon rather than the rye. But it's a really good rye whiskey. But I'll say this. If you like the higher proof, more in-your-face rye, then go for the Sagamore. You're not going to be disappointed. All right, so fifth quarter tailgate has uh, weighed in. He says the finish on the K Lu 6 is where it's at. Totally agree. Berry and coconut, chocolate and sweet oak on the finish. So you're getting the coconut. So maybe that's what I'm tasting. Maybe that's what it is. But Scott, are you getting like the, I'm getting a lot of like peanut butter, like peanutty like type of flavors too. I don't know if you're getting that. More on the nose, the palate is getting more fruit forward the more I go to it. I think this thing is just going to change and evolve and maybe get even fruitier or as fruity as uh, K. Luke 4 is. It's just a different fruit. Oh, this is so sweet, K. Luke 4. It is so confectionary. That's delicious. All right. I'm going to let them uh, I'm gonna let him open up here. I'm going to get to some water. Basil Hayden does not need to open up. That's a very good point. Are you slammered? I agree. <laughs> All right, guys, uh, if you're here hanging out, 452 in the chat, please uh, hit the like button while you're here. Definitely helps uh, the channel. So, um, all right, we're going to set up this Elijah Craig Barrel Proof line here. I mean, crazy, crazy, crazy. Will you be at the Central Ohio Bourbon Festival on September 30th? Um, I'm planning on being there. Um, yes. So we'll see uh, 
if any of you guys from Ohio are watching, you know, I'll uh, come and find me if I'm if I'm able to get there. I'm pretty sure I'm able to get there. So for sure. Uh, New Riff Malted Rye for 80 bucks. Should I pull the trigger? Dude, if you like rye, it's a delicious rye whiskey. I think their malted rye is the best rye they make. So go for it. Um, all right. Just picked up two bottles of Knob Creek 12. Never seen it in Texas. Um, yeah, that's a hell of a pickup right there for sure. Um, but if you don't see it, you won't be disappointed. Yeah, I mean, it is a little high, I think, for that price, but it's it's good. It's You're not going to be disappointed in it. All right. Here we go. Just want to make sure these are the blind that she set up, okay? All right, so these just have letters on the bottom of the glass. I don't know. Oh, my God. These are all so dark. This is going to be fun. Uh, oh, yes, MN. I did forget about that one. The Balboa Rye. Still, well, no. Actually, the Sherry Finish Rye. The Sherry Finished Malted Rye. That's Barrel Proof that New Rift put out last year. That's the best rye I've ever had that they've made. Um, but the ba that Balboa Rye might be my second favorite. And then just a regular Malted Rye. Just saying. Um, yeah, Scott. Actually, that's coming sooner than later uh, to do all three. So we'll see. All right. <laughs> he says, you go, Kim. Oh, my goodness. The legend is here. It is Nancy, the nose fraily, in the house. Dang, really need to try K. Luke. Just quickly saying hi before dinner time. Cheers, my friend. Always love seeing you, Nancy. Thank you so much for, for jumping in here. Uh, Nancy, it's almost blend again in time. Going to have you uh, come back, help out. We might have you on the finals, though, this year. So hopefully, hopefully you're available for that. But always great to see you, Nancy. Everybody say hi to Nancy. Um, we are hoping that Nancy is working on that whiskey camp that we talked about last year where we can all just go and just learn how to blend like her. So I'm willing to pay all the money to go and spend a weekend at blending camp with Nancy and Nose Fraley. <laughs> Come on, Nancy. Let's, let's get the camp going. I can't wait. Nancy equals legend. That's right. Um, Norman Gam says, can't wait for you to fall off the chair at the end of your stream. Came a little late, so my apology if the famous fall was referenced previously. Yeah, we already, we already, we already played it. Yep. Hope you're enjoying that pipe. <laughs> um, wow, we got Nancy and Gene in the chat. Oh, Gene, Gene is here too? That's a big night. Oh, there he is, Gene Nassif. Do I get to be on Blendageddon? Yeah, Gene, you should definitely, since you're a blender man, you should definitely be on. I'll contact you about that. We'll definitely get you on, man. Um, Tony bag of donuts. Hey, Jason bag of barrel proofs. Don't fall tonight, but thoughts on two XO tribute. If you've had it, I haven't had it yet, Tony. So I couldn't give you a, uh, a proper recommendation, unfortunately, but, uh, if anyone else in the chat has had it, please uh, help out Tony bag of donuts. The nose knows there's Eric Sawyer. He wants to do blending cam too. Eric Sawyer, who is the defending champion of blend again. Eric, have you sent in a blend yet? You have to send in a defending blend. Have you sent it in yet? I'm just saying, it better be, like, on its way. Um, like, like it's, like, you have to do a blend, Eric. You can't just be like, ah, I'm done. I'm not going to defend my title. Uh, Mike Hunter, hey, Jason, maybe you could talk Nancy to come into the Bardstown event. I just might do that, but she's busy. But I'll definitely message her on that. Hell yes, Blend Again and Blending Cam is actually in early December at Iron Root Republic Distillery. It's a three-day intensive class. I've now taught for 10 years. All right, guys, December, Iron Root. Um, is it filled already? Can you open up a slot for us? <laughs> um, so Rob Drabinski's chiming in. He thinks the tribute was better than the Innskeeper, which was better than the Phoenix. All right, so progressively getting better. I like it. Just when I think I couldn't be more of a nerd, you had to go on and utter the words blending camp. That's right. You, got, you know you want to attend blending camp by you, Drams. Uh, Eric Sawyer says, I'm mixing it right now. It will be in the mail tomorrow. Oh, shit. Eric Sawyer is in it. Can he repeat? All right, guys. So if you did not hear me earlier, these are my six favorite Elijah Craig barrel proofs from this year. Um, now, I have not put the C923 versus A123 yet. I'm saving that for video. But just based on taste alone, C923 for me, I feel like. It's just so elevated in every aspect. We'll see how it does. 
Um, and then last week, a lot of folks were asking me to put it against some of your other favorite batches. So uh, these are all my favorite batches from the last six years. The last six years. I mean, it's I can't believe I still even have some of these bottles when I was thinking about it, kind of going into it. Um, my favorite leading up to tonight's uh, tonight's matchup has been C918. C918, which I think is, uh, where is C918? Is this C918? C918, which is 131.4 proof. That has been my favorite batch for a very, very long time. Um, a couple of have, have come close. So we'll see. But right there scrolling on the screen, uh, you will see all the batches that are involved in here tonight. We have C918, C919, B520, C921, B522, and then C923. All right? So let me grab my notebook here. Let me move uh, my K Lukes out of the way. Because uh, we're going to have to take some notes here. So I'm going to number these since the bottoms of the glasses are lettered. Just to kind of, so I don't confuse myself. Um, let's see here. Calling it now. B520 win, says Eddie D. I love this. Um, JG says, you should get my blend by tomorrow. Awesome, JG. This one time at Whiskey Blending Camp. <laughs> this one time. Uh, I believe it's still open. My apologies. Got around long day of blending. Oh, my God. I love Elijah Craig. Love you, Nancy. Go have a good dinner. Jason will be one in the blending camp in Birkenstocks and Black Sox. <laughs> Jason, don't forget to fasten your seatbelt on the chair. Yep. Let's dive in here, guys. And while I'm tasting this, while I'm going through this, please, uh, you know, feel free to tag me. Feel free to ask any questions. Remember, the GoFundMe link is above in the chat. Uh, as we go through this, uh, please donate to Darrell's fundraiser. You get your chance to win one of probably what's going to look like almost 100 bottles that we're going to be uh, giving away next week here uh, live on the show. So, um, all right. Uh, Kurt from SLB has said B520 as his favorite. Yeah, B520 is a favorite. So, um, yeah, I'm, I, I forgot. Oh, man, that first one actually smelled really good. Did I? Uh, did I, I forgot. Did I have B520 in here? B522. I don't even remember the damn blends. C921, C919. Yeah, B520 is in here. 127.2. B520 is pretty good. All right, guys, here we go. Um, C919 is my goat, says James Lay. Yeah, let me know what your favorite batch is. I'm curious. So, number one here. Oh, uh, actually, G Nassif. Um, here it is. So uh, a while back, Gene uh, let me blend a little bit of a, a Burai uh, from uh, from Obtanium, from his brand, Cat's Eye Distilling. And uh, we forgot about it for a year. And so it just sat in a freaking barrel for like, what? It was like a year, a year, Gene, a little over. And here it is. We're going to be releasing this soon through the Mass and Journey Whiskey Club. And this thing is delicious. You talk about butter pecan in a glass. That's what that blend is. It is so good. Next week, worst ES. <laughs> Next week, worst ECBP. Oh, that's actually kind of a good idea. Eugene Nassa says 1.5-ish years. It's great. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. First one. That oak and pecan nuttiness is there. Sweet. It's going to be interesting when we nose these, like how different these are going to be. Um, this is pretty classic Heaven Hill. A little bit of dark fruit there. You get a little bit of like that black cherry on this one. I'm going to try to really break these down as much as I can here, guys. How does A123 work itself into the equation? It says, sorry, hungry. I really liked A123, um, but I don't think it 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 beats C923. But again, I haven't done the full blind tasting yet. So I need to see how A123 holds up. I just haven't done all three of them from this year in a blind yet. But that's going to be on an upcoming video very soon. All right, let's try this one. <clears throat> 
Actually, you know what? Let me let me nose these first. I just kind of want to go through the noses here. This one has a much better nose. This one has a little bit more sweet. A little bit more like that creme brulee type note that you get in some really good ones. Um, 457, still in the chat. Thanks for watching, guys. Really appreciate, appreciate it. Woo. All right. Third. This one's very similar to number two here. Again, a little bit of that sweet. Have you tried the K. Luke Cast Strength Rye? I've got my eyes on a bottle here in, uh, was that Mississippi that I see? I uh, have not tried the Cast Strength Rye. I have not tried the Rye's yet from K. Luke. Uh, just strictly the uh, blended bourbons. JC, another question for you. Uh, Boonahabin 18 or Boonahabin Cast Strength 12 year? Thoughts on which one you would get you the goat? Um well, first, thanks for that. Uh, but, man, as much as I love that Bunahaben 18-year, Bunahaben 12 cast strength is delicious. Get the cast strength. Jake McKee says the Ohio, the Ohio State is going down this weekend against the Irish. We're going to go inside. We're going to go outside, inside and outside. Rudy forever. All right, Jake. So you're saying at the end of the game, um, just all the all the different Notre Dame fans are going to see this. <laughs> That's going to be every Notre Dame fan uh, this week when they play Ohio State. Um, I, I think Ohio State is going to have some issues. I think it's going to be a close game. Um, you know, but I, I think everybody here in Ohio is a little bit in Columbus, a little bit nervous about the game this week. But we'll see what happens. We will see what happens. Uh, Jason, do you think you will be able to discern any of these batches? I, I don't think so. Um, I could try to guess, but it's been a while since I've had some of these earlier batches. Um, Nick Bernard says, love the show. C923 is how I wish EC18 tasted. Minus the crazy prices, though, on Willet Bourbon's 10-year plus. I could see that, Nick. I mean, I get it. <laughs> Dragon B says they wish. <laughs> You're five foot nothing, a hundred and nothing. I'm sipping my first pour of ECB A123. To me, it tastes less complex than the C922. However, the finish of my finish on A123. Yep, I could see that. Do you think ECBP is worth 130? Um, that's a good question, but it really depends on the batch. I would pay 130 for the C923 because it's so complex and so good, but. I don't think I'd pay for a regular batch that much, for sure. No way. Man, this one's really nice too. This one has most like a lot of the molasses, a little bit darker flavors here. Oh, typo. Do you think EC18 is worth 130? Um, I don't know. EC18, my history with Elijah Craig 18 has been really hit and miss. Remember, they're single barrels. So I've had more mediocre ones than good ones. But, man, when you get a good one, they could be really, really good. Um, I don't know. 130 is actually not a bad price for a Lodge Craig 18. Uh, so if you don't have one, you maybe roll the dice on it. But, you know, there's a there, there might be a chance you could be disappointed. Some of them come off really oak forward. There's not a lot of complexity. The finish falls off fast. But every now and again, you get one that has a lot of complexity to it. So it's really the luck of the draw of that single barrel, unfortunately. I wish I could say, I, I wish I could tell you like definitively, like yes or no. But unfortunately, that's just not the case. Oh, this one smells delicious. Ooh, man. Number five, great nose here. This one is super sweet, super decadent. Hell, EC18 retails like 160. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's a really great price. $5,305 now in the GoFundMe already. And we're not in, I mean, we're a week out. Dude, this is going to be epic. All right. Number five, great nose there. All right, number six. A little bit more muted there. 
but damn good, man. I mean, really solid noses here. I think one is really good. Man. Oh, man, this one. Five, I think, might have the best nose out of the group. This one just jumps out of the glass. It's it's incredible. This might number six might be the most muted. All right. Is it is C922 uh not in the blind? Wasn't that JC top last year? Yeah, it was. Um I, I picked B522 because in the videos that I went back to, that's the one I picked. Uh but C922 ended up opening up a little bit more and just getting a little bit better, I think. So um no one can do a fly to keep up with chat like Jason. I try. <laughs> yeah, B522 beat out C922 for me when I did the blind tasting in the video. All right, let's start tasting these guys. Buckle up. Here we go. Elijah Craig Barrel Proof is just so stupid good. Oh, my gosh. That first one is incredible. Like, what the hell is that one? That's incredible. That's an incredible bourbon. Um, it is super sweet. It is balanced. It is spicy. So this one doesn't have as much of the cherry bomb note that you get in some of them. This one is way more on to the, like, creme brulee, vanilla, caramel side. A little bit of the nuttiness is there. Really good spice. Good finish, like most Elijah Craig Barrel Proofs are. That one is just, I mean, man, that's off the bat. And the balance on that one is just really, really nice. Um, so, yeah, so I'm, I'm heading to New York tomorrow, which I'm really excited about. I haven't been back to New York in uh, almost three years. And almost three years ago, uh, that's when I lost my grandmother, my beloved uh, grandma, my Nona. Uh, so she passed away in October uh, three years ago, and I haven't been back since. And it's been kind of weird for me because, you know, my mom moved here with me uh, to Ohio. She doesn't live with me, but she lives in Ohio. Um, you know, she was looking to get out of her house in New York and, and you know, move somewhere. I said, why don't you try Ohio? You know, it'd be nice if you're close by. So she lives here with me now. And, you know, I still have all my friends that still live in New York. And I haven't seen them in ages. I've seen them here and there, in, you know, sporadically. But I haven't been back to New York in so long that um, I am really excited to get there tomorrow and see my friends and hang out and just uh, watch some football and drink some whiskey and go to dinner. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it tomorrow. And uh, so... So that's why between the trip this weekend, the um, the fundraiser next week, you know, I think uh, blend again, it might be pushed out maybe like one or two weeks and I want it to start, which is still not a big deal. I don't think we have as many blends this year, but we'll see what happens. We'll uh, we'll get into it. I haven't unpack, uh, unpacked all the boxes that I've gotten, so I do have to go through that and see what those brackets look like. So. Um, yeah, I, I need the, uh, I think I need the R and R just to kind of get away and kind of reconnect with, uh, New York and my, my friends and some family and some stuff, some people that are there. I, I can't wait. So, but it's going to be weird. It's be the first time I'm back in New York, not seeing my grandmother. And I think that's also why I had some trepidation of going back there because just all that connection that I had to New York was not there anymore. Does that make sense? But uh, I think I feel like I'm ready to go, you know, see my goddaughter and uh, see my best friend, Mike, and just kind of hang out. It'll, it'll be good. Yeah, exactly, Adam. Whiskey, football, and steak. Number two is a really, really good batch. Also very balanced. Uh, not as punchy as A or number one. Um a little bit more muted, though. Uh, DL, I'm not doing any. I'm not bringing any bottles with me, but I am planning on doing some uh, hunting for sure, for sure. 
I have my spots in New York that I still talk to. I'm going to see what they got for me. Man, this has an incredible spice, though. The, the finish on number two is what stands out there. The finish on this one is great. Um, Whiskey Uncensored says, dude, yeah, Ben, I'm coming to New York, man. But honestly, Ben, it, this is more of a non-whiskey trip for me. I'm, I'm kind of making this uh, more of an R&R, &R, see my friends and kind of just, you know, relax. But if I have some time to do some whiskey hunting, I might. We'll see what happens. Well, I'm going to see City Field uh, tomorrow because uh, I'm flying into LaGuardia. So uh, City Field is right there. So I'm going to drive right by City Field and say, what's up, Mets? It sucked this year, but I still love you. <laughs> oh, man. Three has gotten even better on the nose here. Three is absolutely delicious. Let's try number three. I'll, t I'll keep you posted. Oh, my God. I'll keep you posted, Ben. Oh, my gosh. That's so good. Ooh. Yeah, Ben, if I if I do go see uh, the boys over at, uh, you know, at the store, I'll let you know when I'm going. It could be Saturday, I think, maybe. Sipping on some A123. Bottle is about halfway down, and dang, this opens up so nicely. The new LaGuardia is going to shock you. Yeah, that's the other thing. I haven't seen LaGuardia since they completely redid it. Oh, my gosh. Three. Three and one so far are incredible. Such good batches. Um, this is more of a candy shop. A little bit more butterscotchy, which I love. Good oak. Yeah, one and three. I really dig. All right, I need a little water here because I'm gonna uh, gotta bring this closer. <laughs> Thanks for Max Scherzer. Oh, you're very welcome. You're very welcome, Matt Scherzer. Uh, yeah, he's already hurt. I heard. You'll have to walk a lot more, but you'll enjoy it. Yeah, I just want to kind of see it. Yeah, I'm gonna eat so many New York bagels. 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 If I have time to go to Katz's Deli, downtown Manhattan, and get a pastrami and corned beef Reuben, I'm doing it. Oh, yes. Cannot wait. All right. Number four. Yo, yo, yo. Hey, Black Bourbon family's here. What is going on? Jason and Brandy in the house. I haven't sang it in a long time. Raise your drinks up casually. Great channel. Black Bourbon Family, Jason and Brandon. Check them out, guys. The Mets getting David Stern means they will win the NL East in two years. I hope so. Uh, Lucali Pizza says malt reviews. Cats is for sure. Yeah. I have craved that sandwich for years. I haven't had it in years, man. Oh, man. Number four. Oh, number four, not as oomph on the palate. It's good. Not great compared to the others, but I did just have some water. It's sweet, but it's a different sweet. This is more of a pecan, um, pecan, cinnamon, like a sweet cinnamon. Not like the baking cinnamon, like a sweet cinnamon type of uh, like dessert, like cinnamon roll type thing it's got going on. Great finish, man. Great finish on number four. Um, man, you do these in a blind, you realize how different these Elijah Craig Barrel Proofs can get um, when you kind of line them up like this. Really, really good. Got to hit a moray pizza. Um, let's see, like cinnamon roll. Sweet. Really good. All right, I can't wait to taste five because five had the best nose. Yeah, uh, yeah, Danino's is the best. I mean, there's so many good pizza places. I don't know if it's still there, but there's a place right outside of Madison Square Garden that you would think is more of a touristy pizza place, but it's small, it's long. Uh, you know, it's kind of a long hallway uh, to get to get through. You have the counter, then you have all the seats in the back, and that place. I always forget the name of it. I just know where it is, but I can't remember the name of it. And that pizza is amazing. 
it's just huge triangle giant new york slices it's like all the cheese and the topping on it weighs like 10 pounds oh my god it is it is so good it is so good oh i've been craving a trip to arthur ave if you want to take a trip back to the old country dude arthur avenue man i haven't been to arthur ave and man it's been it's been a long time so i've been back in arthur ave holy crap uh dl2 brothers so <laughs> it's not tomorrow <laughs> it's definitely not tomorrow <laughs> That's one of my favorite scenes in uh, in uh, the office when uh, Mike uh, Michael Scott goes to he has to go to corporate in Manhattan and he's like this is my town I love my town I like to go and you know have a real New York slice this is where I get it and then they show Sparrow <laughs> I'm like, oh my God. I'm like didn't see that coming oh <laughs> uh, it's outside of Penn it's outside of Penn it's on the um, I think it's 35th Street. It's not 34th. It's on the 35th side, if I remember correctly. Oh, man. This one is ridiculous. Number five. Ooh. Number five. Number five is really good, guys. Man, that just, it's a Rick house. It's Rick housey. It's dense. It's dark. It's rich. It's got a long finish to it. Olive Garden for real Italian. Yeah, Olive Garden. Yeah. I was just going to say that. The office hilarious. <laughs> I was thinking Sparrow on 33rd too. <laughs> yes, not Sparrow. <laughs> Holy crap. I don't think... I don't think any of them is beating five right now. Five is ridiculous. Um, man. Which one is five? Could that be my beloved C918? I mean, C918 had similar flavors to that, if I remember correctly. Um, we all know the best plate set is Hungry Howie's. This has to be the hardest blind ever. It's a system trend. Yeah, this is tough, man. But again, I wanted to do this because it's really interesting when you kind of break all these down and how different they are. Uh, and you start kind of really figuring out, man, a lot of barrel proofs, all of them are good. There's nothing wrong with any of these. But when you start comparing them and finding the little nuances in between them, that's what that's the fun part. All right, last one. I couldn't get too much on the nose. It was pretty muted. Um, and it still is. But let's try it on the palette here. Yeah, still damn pretty good for me. B520, two wheels down is in the house. Holy shit. What is going on, my man? How you been? I haven't seen you in a minute. <laughs> two wheels down is here, folks. Hope you've been a good, man. I hope you've been, uh, hope you've been all right. Um, after starting my whiskey journey, uh, my whiskey hunting hat, I found myself yelling, I declare bankruptcy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, Mamuka says uh, for me B five twenty. Yeah, I could see that. Um, okay, so this one, this last one here. Let me get one more sip in before we start breaking these down. New York Pizza Suprema. Is that the one? I don't know. Uh, again. It's been three years. I'm not sure if it's the same name, dude. Um, you know, who knows if it's changed names, changed owners. You never know with pizza shops in New York. So, uh, been good working like a dog. Nice to see you, man. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're, hope the wife is okay, dude. So, it sounds like one, three, five, top three, two, four, six, bottom three. William Wiley, you might be onto something there. One, three, five. Could be no one three five. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, it, we could have an odd situation here. You got it? Odd situation. Um, have you ever had a? Let's see. Just tuning in. What up, Eric Gunderson? What's going on, Gundo? Nice to see you, man. 
Where was it in New York City, Mamuka? Um, it's on 33rd. No, it's shoot. I'm gonna I'm gonna look it up right now. I'm gonna Google map that shit. Google Maps. I'm gonna see if it's still there if it comes up. Madison Square Garden. Let's see. All right, so there's Madison Square Garden. Um, okay, you have Seventh Ave. So it's on the Eighth Avenue side. Um, actually, no, you're right. It is New York Pizza Suprema. That's the one. New York Pizza Suprema. It's still there. That is the one that. That's exactly it. I'm looking at the photo right now, Ben. That's what it is. It's New York Pizza Suprema. I friggin' love their pizza. It's on 8th Avenue. It's on the corner of 8th and 31st Street. I'm I'm telling you. I love that pizza. That's exactly what it is, uh, Ben. Good call out, man. Yep. Hell yeah. Wife is great. Hockey's back in a week. All is right in the world. Yeah, hockey. Dude, hockey gets like no breaks. I feel like as soon as the season's over, you know, it starts right back up again. Um, better than some of nine plus one bite review places. Uh, West or East. Wife is great. Red Baron. Dude, that's Sparrow. It's not Sparrow. <laughs> Joe's on Carmine and over to Blaker Street for a Nona Maria slice for the world. Um you know, I love going to, what, Spaghetti Garden in Brooklyn. I think Brooklyn, uh, Staten Island probably has some of the best pizza places uh, on the planet. So, all right, let's go through these one more time. We're going to go through them in reverse order. Our Kerma Shit Nine Barrel Age Rise Worth the Money Powerlifting Progression. I don't think I've ever heard of that. Kerma Shit? That pizza looks pretty dang good. Yeah, Terrence, is really good. D H says I work uh, for NHL and eat at and eat at Pizza Suprema all the time. That's hilarious. Yeah, D H, I'm telling you, love that pizza. Brooklyn definitely has the best. All right, so go in reverse order here. So this one is is solid compared to the others. I just don't think it's going to hold up, uh, unfortunately. Yeah, I mean, Tafara Pizza in, in Brooklyn, I mean, it's an institution. Love Tafara's. This number five, though, is stupid. Oh, my gosh. It is so rich and dense and just everything leads into the palate. And then it leaves you this long, lingering finish that's also sweet, spicy, Rick Housey. Dude, five, five has to be the winner right now. Five is, is the leader in the clubhouse for sure. Yeah, the Defara Sicilian Square Malt Reviews. Dude, Malt Reviews. We got to hook. We got to hang out and have some freaking pizza together, dude. <laughs> Speaking my language, man. Damn. All right. Number four. Hey, what's up, Bourbon Lens? Nice to see you guys here. Guys, Bourbon Lens right here. One of the best podcasts on the planet for bourbon. Guys, take a listen. If you haven't listened to Bourbon Lens yet, please do. Absolutely great content. Thank you, guys. Isn't New York, isn't New York also known for the chopped cheese sandwich? Uh, Frank Pepe Chef's Kiss. I hope number five turns out to be the one I have, says Dwayne Knight. <laughs> we'll see. <clears throat> yeah, the chopped cheese. <clears throat> chopped cheese sandwich. Yep. <clears throat> I'm not sure if that's a New York thing now. But yeah, that's another thing I miss. Going to the bodegas, getting just like a really, really good sandwich. So many little things I miss about New York. We're getting like real nostalgic here tonight. I'm I'm loving this. Um, yeah, the bodegas. Um, there was this one specific dude in New York. 
uh, he's probably not there anymore if he moved his card. But I remember he was um, he was downtown, um, and he did the you know the the heroes. He did like I know some people call them the gyros, not gyros, the heroes, hero. And they, he had like whatever he used to season his uh, his meat for his for his heroes were so delicious. His tzatziki sauce was incredible. Love getting a um, a uh, like some falafel from him. But getting a hero from him was absolutely delicious. Definitely miss that. Two wheels down. Do you miss the rats? Only in the subways, man. Only in the subways. Jason, that is your second channel. Proof and pies. That's that's actually a really good. Uh... If I lived in New York, I would definitely do that. I'd be jumping around every pizza place with a bottle of bourbon in my jacket, having a poor bourbon, and I would review the bourbon and review the pizza. Dude, that'd be amazing. <laughs> yeah travis i mean if somebody's not doing that already somebody that lives in new york that's watching should be doing that review some bourbon have some pizza that's right and i want some royalties for giving you the idea <laughs> ken dad 23 is like move back <laughs> New chat. Yeah, Aaron C. It's going to be bourbon. Yeah, pours and pies. I like that idea a lot. I miss Paul D, Paul uh, Paul's the burger joint on 2nd and St. Mark's. Um, yeah, man. So many good places. I miss uh, hanging out on um, Steinway Street in Astoria. You talk about traveling all through the Mediterranean, the cuisine, all down Steinway Street in Astoria, Queens. I mean... Greek food, uh, Argentinian. I mean, it is incredible food on Steinway. Loved it down there. You got to work your way through like the hookah bars to, to get to all the good stuff that's in uh, on Steinway. So, yeah. What's up, Impudent Rock? Nice to see you, man. Get Portnoy involved. That's Steve Stefan. Yeah, that shit would blow up, man. All right, so number four, not as good as five. I think five overtakes six and four, much to William Wiley's point here as far as, like, what we're tasting. All right, let's go to three. Three I really liked. Come to Chicago, I'll start a channel called Barrels and Beef, says <laughs> Aaron Much. <laughs> I like that one too, man. Barrels and Beef, like some Italian. Who watched The Bear? Did you guys watch The Bear on Hulu? Greatest show ever on tv i don't care what anybody says i love that show all all i wanted to do is eat uh you know chicago style italian beef sandwiches that's all i wanted to eat with watching that show it was ridiculous oh my god the bear incredible also uh kind of switching subjects from new york and pizza and all the goodness that's there um so two shows that i'm watching one the bear which i finished two uh, Ashoka on um, Disney Plus for all you Star Wars nerds out there like me. Anybody enjoying that series? Uh, what, do you, what are you thinking of that one? If you're watching it, just curious. Such a good show. The Bear is amazing. Season one was great. Season two was a bit boring. Says two wheels down. There was a lot more of like that crazy Italian, you know, like conversations in, in season two. But I felt like it was building up to something. Bear was great. Ditka Bear Sausage. Oh, it's amazing. Cocaine Bear. Not Cocaine Bear, but The Bear. It's about cooking and um, having a uh, Italian beef restaurant in Chicago. It's an Italian family. It's pure chaos, and it's amazing to watch. Ahsoka started slow. Three, uh, third episode got good, says Roman Carter. Recently watched Chernobyl, and I'm kind of obsessed now, says Kenneth Rathburn. That's cool. Yeah, the last two episodes of Ahsoka was were really, really good. Yep. Season two had my favorite moments. Richie's the absolute best. That episode was so feel good, man. Yeah, dude. Richie's evolution, I thought, really kind of because he annoyed me in, in the first season. I'm like, dude, this guy's so annoying, but his evolution got really, really cool. All right, number three is up there with for me. I don't think it's as good as five, but it's up there. Man, that is so good. 
three is an absolute candy bomb. Just butterscotch, toffee, sugar. So freaking good. Richie's evolution was awesome. So well done. I totally agree, Terrence. Totally agree, man. But you know what? Number two is coming on. Number two is coming on to the scene here. The more this I, I go back to it, the nose is beautiful on number two. And two, yeah. Oh, two has like a great finish as well. Two is up there as well. Five, three, two. And let's check one again real quick. I really did enjoy one a lot. One again is one of those more confectionery uh, type uh, type pours. In Ashoka, having Ray Stevenson as uh, Balin, best uh, best life with him knowing he has passed, super depressing. Yeah, Owen, yeah, that was kind of rough to, to watch, especially the first episode saying, you know, in memory. Um, in memory of uh, Ray Stevenson, it was, you know, but he, he's doing such an incredible job here. God, the, the, dude, this first one's getting better and better every time I go back to it. Man, this one's going to be tough. All right. So four and six, I think, are my bottom two uh, coming off of, of these here. I think six I would put last. Four is second to last. So I'm going to put, let's see, one, two, three, four, and six. So I'm going to put these aside. Those are going to stay there in order. Yeah, I put that in order. Fine. All right, so now, I mean, it really doesn't matter, you know, what numbers I have here, but four and six, I'm actually going to keep. So four will be fifth, and six will be sixth. All right, so that leaves me one, two, three, and five. I don't see anyone taking out five right now. Five is ridiculous. Oh my gosh. Five is five is beautiful. I'm keeping five at number one. I'm already calling it. Five is number one. Number one. Number five. All right. So it comes down to one, two, and three for the rest of the spots. Um these will be tough because these are, are are all somewhat similar, but a little bit close. Uh when it comes to um, the sweetness level and the balance they have. That's the thing that's keeping me on these three. Um, this blind tells you that you're an ECBP fan. Yeah, I mean, pretty much. Back to the pizza, says Eddie D. We're back to the pizza. Uh, Defar and LNB have the best pizza in Brooklyn, New York pizza, New Park pizza in Queens. Louis and, oh, Louie and Ernie's in the Bronx. Eddie D, I'm with you. Delicious pizza. Absolutely. Pirate bottle incoming if five was C923. That's true. If if that is B523, I'm sorry, C923. Yeah, we're gonna have a pirate bottle come into the fray here. We'll see what happens. All right, let's try to grade these two, these three real quick. So when it comes to nose. One wins. One wins on the nose, hands down. As far as flavor goes. Man. One is giving me all the things. Man, I love two as well. These three are so close. This is where, like... Like the batches just start getting a little bit muddled together because they're close enough that they're giving similar experiences. But what is that? What is that one thing that's like setting one off, you know, from the other? Oh, three. I think I'm gonna have to go three, one, and then two. Three, one, two. That's my lineup, and I'm sticking to it. All right. 
Here we go. Here's my order. I don't want to sit more because if we bring a pirate ball into the fray, I have to get up early for a flight tomorrow. So just trying to trying to stay, uh, you know, stay okay right here. All right. Nathan Jurgensen says winner Hidden Barn. Yeah, I don't think that's happening. Um, yeah, Hidden Barn's not happening. All right, here we go. Um. Where did she put the key? Oh shit. Oh, she might have texted me. Um Okay. She said it's in the C Biotics box. <laughs> and there it is. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, there it is. Here's the key. Here we go. In the shoe, under the sneaker, Jason's phone looks like an iPad in his hand. <laughs> this is my uh, my my Google my Google uh, Pixel. I'm a Google phone guy. I'm a Google phone guy. All right. Here we go. She has such nice handwriting. <laughs> All right, let's see what we got. So my last place, Elijah Craig Barrel Proof tonight is or goes to letter F. Letter F is That's not it. Is that it? This is it. B522. B522 comes into my last place. Um, B522, 121 proof. Maybe that low proof kind of hurt it. Um, but man, yeah, B522, which I ended up putting into the uh, to the fray tonight, over C922, ends up getting last place for me. So that's interesting. All right, B522. You got you done got last. All right, let me put you back here. All right, so let me cross that one out. Jason is a GABA Google phone guy. Yeah, exactly. All right, so B522 is out. All right. Fifth place goes to the D. The D is. This is surprising. This seems to be a lot of people's favorites here, which is B520. B520 is the D. Um, yeah, I just want to make sure. Yeah, double check. That is D. B520 is letter D, which goes, uh, I mean, I just think compared to the other ones, this had a little bit less of a punch of flavor than some of the other ones. Uh, so here it is. B520 came in at 127.2 proof. I think we're, we're, we're sensing a theme here. I think the ones that I like ended up being higher proof points. <laughs> so we'll see. So the D is out. So that leaves still C918. C918, my favorite batch of, of all time so far is still in the, in the mix. C921. Oh, both Bs have been eliminated. It's all Cs now. C918, C921, C923, and C919 are all here. Um, yeah, I didn't see that company. Okay. Uh, didn't expect that. B520 fell over <laughs> C over B. And you know what? That makes sense to me because Cs over the years have normally been my favorites over A and B. So this is falling in line with what I like, which is a good thing. So now we're in the top four here. They're all Cs. Let's see what we got. Fourth place goes to letter B, which is... Oh, 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 shit. Where are you? Nope. 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 It's you. Oh, um, wait. No, where are you? I'm not reading you. Oh, here it is. C921. C921 
gets um, gets fourth place tonight. C921 comes in at 120.2 proof. Man, these these lower proof um, these lower proof Elijah Craig barrel proofs that were hitting the market in the last couple of years, I think are starting to they're starting to kind of show their colors here in this blind. Uh, it seems the lower the proof, the less I'm picking it. Um, so my top three right now are C918, C923, and C919 is still here. The fact that C918 is still holding strong against these others, I think it says a lot about that batch. So um, no way in a heads-up blind, B520 loses out to C921, says Matt Morris. Yeah, dude, C921 for me. Um, well, hold on. No way loses out to C921. Yeah, C921 for me. I mean, they were probably pretty close, dude, but I don't know. I've always liked C's over B's. All right, top three. Here we go. Number three, letter A. Oh, and it falls. Letter A goes to my beloved C918. C918 gets third place. C918 is 131.4 proof. There you go. 131.4 proof. So that means it's between C919 and C923. What? Um, all right. Oh boy. Okay. C923 is in the top two, which is a little scary. Here we go. This is number two. And this is number one. <laughs> uh, I got to take another sip of this one. Hold on. I'm going to take a sip of this. I'm sorry, guys. I hate to do this to you, but it happened. C923 has taken the crown. C923. That dense, dark flavor, that finish that it has is unbelievable. I it's it's stupid good. I there's no way around it. Um, second place goes to the C919. C what C919, which I don't even remember being that good. Um C919 at 136.8. Maybe that's why I liked it so much. Old school batch right there. There it is. C919. Damn, powered pirate. Glad I picked it up last week. C919 is absolutely insane. But this C923, guys, it's it's a throwback. It's a throwback bottle um of Elijah Craig barrel proof it's it's just stupid good there's no way around it sorry I know people are gonna be like oh you screwed it now I'm never gonna get it I I understand I'm sorry but listen this was requested for me to do so I did it and man C919 has been my favorite I definitely have to find C923 someone pulled the plug on the stream till I can buy another rigged says <laughs> yeah it's definitely not rigged definitely not rigged uh, pouring a dram of 919 to drown out the sorrows. Stop the stream. Bought the 91. Bought the 923. All right, so this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna take the nine, the C923, which is here, and we're gonna put it up against a pirate bottle. So as as promised, let me uh, put these all here. Yeah, it's it's pirate bottle time here. Make sure I got the letters right. Yep. Okay. All right, guys. Let's get a pirate bottle. I said I would do it. And here it is. This is the Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. Um, I believe this is batch 11 or 12. 139.4 proof. A pirate bottle, Elijah Craig, barrel proof goodness. Um, there are only 500 people in here nationwide. Consider yourselves lucky to have the inside info. Go get them. 
Yes, the pirate bottle. I cracked my batch twelve pirate, pirate and didn't like it, but found I had COVID and lost my oh snap. This is Jordan versus LeBron type stuff. This is. This is. Uh, are you pouring the leftovers back into the respective bottles or making a blend? No, we're gonna make a blend. Uh, but I do want to take the. Um, uh, I want to grab my winning glass here. I want to pour a little bit more. This is the C923. I'll pour a little bit more in there. What I'm gonna do. I think I've done this before. I'm basically going to make the Voltron blend. I'm going to have my five lions of Eliza Craig Barrel Proof come together into one stupid, ridiculous blend, which is here. So that is all the Eliza Craig Barrel Proofs, all five of them, five of the rest of them. I have not uh, put the, I did not put the C923. In the mix or the pirate bottle obviously so now what i need to do is take one of these empty glasses add a little water to it um master drum any update on the cap says wade ward yes um my master drum hats are in the middle of production right now i don't know how long they're going to take to get ready but i will let you know all right here we go <laughs> this is gonna be good these pirate bottles i think are some of the best whiskey ever made some of the best bourbon ever made to be honest um let me uh let me bring this bottle back here c923 pirate bottle here we go this is all clinking together Dude, the, the pirate bottle, yeah. So here's the color. So B5, uh, I'm sorry, C923 versus this pirate bottle. You guys can see the color here. See that? This one. A little darker. A little darker. It's not going to beat the pirate bottle. The power bottle is just stupid. Stupid good. I'll tell you what, though. That C923, that's the closest thing to that power bottle that I've tasted from any Elijah Craig Barrel Proof since they switched to the uh, newer bottles. It's got a little bit of that oak funkiness to it, that deep, dark, rich molasses. It's really, really good. But this pirate bottle, yeah, the pirate bottle is, yeah, they're they're supposed to be older whiskey. They're not twelve. They're, it's definitely older whiskey in the bottle. Um, David Vaught says, "Sorry, I'm late for the podcast. What did I miss?" Yeah, pirate bottle still reigns supreme. To be honest. Um, I don't think there's ever going to be another, a newer Elijah Craig Barrel Proof that's going to take that out. This C923 is probably the closest one that I've had. Again, if you guys have not seen this one yet, uh, 13 years. 13 years and seven months old is the youngest whiskey in the batch. Um, and it does. It, it just it, it makes a difference. You know, I hate to say it and I hate to put so much um, spotlight on it because I know people want to get it. They want to get their hands on it. It's going to be a mad flurry to get it. But honestly, guys, even before I said anything, as soon as that 13-year age statement was announced from Elijah Craig, everybody went ape shit, And you know they did. Everybody's like, oh, I have to have it. No matter what I said, normally with Elijah Craig Barrel Proofs, even if I say I'm not that crazy about it, like very much close to the B523 from this year, I did not like that batch at all. But, you know, people were going to still buy it. It's still an Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, high age, Good quality bourbon. But when you're comparing it to other ones, it just fell flat. So no matter what I said, people are going to go crazy for this batch. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Um, batch 11 versus HH17. Did you enjoy C922? Um, C922. I did like C922. 
You know what? I should get C922 and see how it does. Because I did have B522 in the mix. Let me grab C922 real quick. Um, let me let me grab this. Hold on one second. All right, here's C922. Let me, um, I want to see how C922 stacks up here. Hmm. The pirate bottle's on another level. I'm sorry. I'm just I'm just gonna leave the pirate bottle out of the equation. It's not even fair. Um, all right, C922 versus C923. That's the question. I'll tell you what, C922 is sweeter. You know why? Because C923 C923 has more of like the Rick Housey, like um uh Rick Housey oak smell, which some people like, some people don't like, it really kind of depends. He's taking an awful risk standing up this too many times. Great content, Jason. Seriously. Thanks, Rob D. Appreciate it, man. Wow, C922 is really good. Um, C923. Yeah, I, I think it's the it's like this oaky Rick Housey finish that C923 has. I think you can make an argument that some of these other batches are going to be better on the front of the palette than C923. But what C923 has that none of these other batches have is that finish. That long, lingering, Rick Housey type of finish that it has is the star of the show. None of the other batches have had it. That's what stood out about that batch. Um, bro, there's a lot of ECBP. What time is that flight tomorrow? Wasn't the chair incident another ECBP blind? Be careful, Jason. Um, do you have B519? I think I do somewhere. This is the comparison I was hoping for. Thank you, says Mr. Mushnick. C922 is... C922 has a very, very similar front of the palette to C923. However, the finish is where C923 shines. So, um... So it looks like C923 is my new favorite, apparently. Um, C919, you know, ended up being right there with it. I mean, C919 was like this. So if you have C919, you have a damn good batch. Uh, C918 was third for me, which ended up, that's, has been, that's been my favorite for a long time. And the fact that it held its own against all these newer batches, even up to now, absolutely loved it. And then you have, you know, some of the rest of them. I can't believe B522 or B520 um, actually ended up kind of far back. But I think that was a proof issue, not so much a flavor issue. So, yeah. Um, let's see. What in production makes C's different and better? Says Nathan Jurgensen. I, I don't know what it is, man. To be honest, I always feel like C's... Um, Always have either the higher proof, the um, the more bold flavors. I don't know if they plan it that way. So this is how I always see it. Like, all right, wait, hold on. This is the this is the C922. I'm gonna add it to the blend. <laughs> all right. So we have the Voltron blend here. I'm gonna let that sit. And uh, while that's sitting, I'm gonna put that down here. Um, I mean, it is possible the C's have been always blended. So this is my thing with all the, uh, all the different blend, all the different releases for me for a long time. A, you guys tell me in the chat if you agree with me. A, the A batches have always been the spiciest, really, really spicy, long finish, super black peppery. A lot of tingliness, maybe even to the point where it's a little bit more ethanol forward. Bees have always been the sweetest. Bees are candy. 
toffee, butterscotch, a little bit of oak there. Normally the sweetest of the batches. And then C's are normally a little bit more oak forward, but they're also sweet and have the balance and the spice. So to me, it's always been kind of a, a progression. I don't know if Elijah Craig or Heaven Hill plan it like that, but for me, it's like A is usually the spice driven one. B is the sweet one. And then C is like the, uh, the combination of two of them together. I mean, what do you guys think? Do you, do you think, do you think that's the thing? I don't know. I really do feel like that's like the progression of most of the logic barrel proofs to me. A hundred percent on the, on the AS agree says David Goldman. A is aggressive. B is approachable. C is rich. I think that's actually a perfect way to say it, Kenneth. That's exactly how I feel. A is aggressive. B is approachable and sweet. And C is kind of the best of both worlds, but a little bit richer. Um, Brian says, I like the mouthfeel better on A's. Okay, definitely. That sounds spot on, says Jeff Perkins. Uh, could weather influence? Maybe. C922 as of now is my favorite the last three years. I also tend to like C batches. It was the thing until B523. Yeah, that's true. B523 kind of cut that off. B523 just kind of was so just off profile. It was just weird. Um, I wonder, yeah, A, Winter Spice, B, Sweet Spring, C, Dark Fall. That could be an extremely spot-on assessment of what we're looking at when we come up to these three. You know, I would really love to talk to uh, Master Distiller over at uh, Heaven Hill and see if that's actually the plan for these. I got to try to get that dude on, man. Bourbon Lens, have you ever talked to the uh, Connor O'Driscoll, Master Distiller of Heaven Hill? If you have... Let me know. I would love to, you know what? I have some connections there. I did do a, uh, I did a whole, you know, video event with Bernie lovers. I would love to see if I could talk to Connor O'Driscoll. That would be amazing. Um, I definitely have to do that. Luminati predictions says JG. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Bourbon lens, whatever contact I need to go through for Connor. Can you please email me the master drum at gmail.com? He has to be on an off the still episode. There are too many good Heaven Hill products I, I have to ask him about. I have all this stuff in my head I have to unload. So, yeah, that would be pretty cool. Yeah, Bourbon Lens is probably texting with him right now. Yeah, probably. Again, guys, Bourbon Lens, if uh, you haven't read, listened to their podcast, please do. Absolutely unbelievable content. All right, guys, it is 11 p.m. I have to sign off here. Get ready to go to New York, baby. I'm coming back. And remember, next week, real quick, guys. Next week, it's the last time I show it, A Night for Navia, live fundraiser, September 27th, 9 p.m., right here on the Mass and Drum. But remember, at 8 p.m., head on over to a Hello Again Whiskey Friends. They're going to be kicking the night off, a crap load of bottles in order for you to, uh, to win based on the fundraiser. We're already at a little over $5,000 for uh, the fundraiser. Man, let's get it as high as we can support this little cute five-year-old and uh, her chemotherapy. Nobody wants to see this little girl go through any more chemotherapy. Let's help her beat this thing, beat leukemia. It's going to be an epic, epic live stream, a night of giving next week. So uh, cheers to you guys. I'm going to be off the grid a little bit this weekend because I just need to get away for a little bit. Uh, love all of you. Thanks for hanging out tonight. And as I always say, it's not about the whiskey. It's the people you share it with. I know some of you kind of like repeated that as I was saying it, right? Because you guys are, you guys know it. Uh, look out for my uh, my review of the uh, Russell Single Rick House. I think you'll get a kick out of it. Cheers, and I'm gonna try the Voltron blend right now. Let's see how we do. <laughs> it is so cherry. It would absolutely blow your mind how cherry it is. It is delicious. This is the blend. This is the blend. All right, guys. I'm going to spend some time with my blend. Love you all. Cheers. Go Falcons. See you guys next week right here for the Night of Giving. Take care, guys.